Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege you have to be gathered before you. Your word declares that we're two or three are gathered in your name, that you are there in your midst. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for the privilege I have to teach you this morning. I declare that my thoughts are crisp, they are clear and articulate, and my thoughts are very right writer. That your word is not in simplicity, and so your word is a free course in the hearts of the listeners. Thank you because burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed. We praise you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, enjoying God's provision in your finances. Enjoying God's provision in your finances. Matthew chapter 6. So if you have your Bibles, let's turn, let's turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. <coughs> Matthew chapter 6. You have it? Okay. If you have it, say amen, please. Amen. Okay, most of us. I read from verse 25. So therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. <clears throat> Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly father feeded them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one tribute to unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment, considering the lilies of the field, how they grow? They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take note of saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we clothe it? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Let's say it together. For your heavenly Father. Let's say it together. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. What are the things he's talking about? Material things, clothing, raiment, food, shelter. He says, your heavenly father knowing that you have need of all these things. Now look at what the, the, the recommendation therefore is in verse 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be what? And unto you. From the above we establish, from the above verse we establish a truth that work is a means by which provision is made available. We establish that. We see that in Genesis chapter 2, and then also we look at Genesis chapter 3. And so that is established. Let's look at another. Let's look at another text and see what the scriptures have to say about work, so that we apply ourselves to it. Now here's, here's, here's the point: if you understand God's way of being and doing right, and you aim and strive after it, and we see that it's work, then your attitude to work, your perception of work changes. When it changes, then you can have optimal optimal results. The reason why people do not enjoy maximum results or do not make the most out of their life is because of their attitude to work. Some, think, some treat work as a necessary evil. Oh, well, I have to so they, 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 do, they don't engage with all their faculties and with enthusiasm. And that impacts what comes to them. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Are you there? If you have it, say amen. Yeah. Okay, so let's examine work. Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to the scripture says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 22. Solomon, the preacher, is writing, and here's what he says. says Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that man should rejoice in stuff. Therefore I perceive that there is nothing better. If you read the if you read Ecclesiastes, um, a recurring theme or a recurring statement is you see in Ecclesiastes is a striving. It's a striving under some vanity, it's the word vanity. Some versions use the word useless. 
Do you understand? A vanity. So in Ecclesiastes, um, Solomon, in writing, it shows you the vanity of unbridled pursuit, essentially. That's what Ecclesiastes is all about. And then points you to God. However, in studying it and looking at it, you'd also see things that are important. So here is one of the things that are important that Solomon states. So let's see what he says in verse 22. He says, Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should. So he's saying that there is nothing better than what he's going to say in the life of a man. Notice what he says. Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his sleep. That a man should rejoice in his wife. Are you sure? That a man should rejoice in his own... What does the version say? Walk. No, he says there's nothing better than this. That a man should rejoice in his own walk. Now notice, for that is his portion. Those are strong statements. Now he closes up the verse and says, For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? And he's talking about, he speaks in, here also, he like, says, he speaks about life after, uh, life after death and so on. But notice an interesting statement he makes, profound. I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man, of course, by extension, woman should rejoice in his own work. For that is his portion. From the text, Two things are revealed. One, that nothing is better than that a man should rejoice in his work. One, nothing is better than that you should rejoice in your work. So many years ago, I was reading um, books, you know, some books that talked about work or business, like John Maxwell, Zig Ziglar, you know, men that write along those lines. And then it says the statistics has found out that um, 90, is it 90 or 80, I'm not very sure now, but a large portion, about 80% of vets of heart attacks, heart attacks, statistics has found out about 70 or 80% of heart attacks that happened in people happened on Mondays. Then they, find, they ask, so why would it be that 70 or 80 percent of heart attacks happen on the first day of work? The conclusion from their study and observation, obviously, the individuals resented what they were doing. And so, on Monday, their palpitation was gone. And for some reason, their hearts gave up. So, Many years ago, when I came to the city of Lagos, young man, uh, just coming to the city of Lagos, I was pastoring, who wanted to visit, I had a friend of mine who visited a lady who was in our fellowship on campus. I didn't know her, because she had left by the time I joined that fellowship. But he, my friend, knew her. But I knew her younger sister. So we went to see her and we in her house. Never forget, we're in a place, you know, Molly, we were talking and having, you know, on a Sunday afternoon evening, we're just talking and, you know, I'm chatting, getting fellowship. All of a sudden, the young lady screamed, ah! and Then she said something, like, it's 14 hours to walk. I got the guy looked at her and said, ah, no, 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 I have to get ready for work, I have to, oh, well, oh. she got in a frenzy. Nobody needed to tell us that um, our time was what? Well, was gone. Well. She was working with a financial institution and they had unrealistic targets for that woman to kill. This was in 1999. Oh, God. I don't think I have seen someone exclaim about time of work like that. And she's screaming. Is is she called the hours. I wasn't thinking about well, to to us we were relaxed, you know, just chatting and trying to enjoy the evening. And then she she screamed, "How is it? I don't know. I have to start working. I have to start thinking about my target." 
We we'll excuse ourselves. Now, tell me, is she not very likely to give up with that kind of attitude? Huh? She is. She is. Anxiety, setting, stress, must work immediately she became stressed out. We didn't need anybody to tell us it's time to go, it's time to go. You cannot say that that lady was enjoying her work. Can you say that? No. So from that text, you see, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from that, you see that there's nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his work. Now, that's your decision to me. It's up to you. God cannot decide that for you. You decide to be happy about your work. You decide to be happy about what you do. Regardless of what it is. Then someone can say, but what if I don't like it? Well, James writes and says to the believers, he says, um, count it all joy when you face diverse kinds of trials and temptations. So, when you're going through trials and challenges, is there something to be happy about? No, but the word of God recommends that you should. So you should. Because God is going to make a way out. By the same token, you should be able to make it clear to yourself, I have to rejoice in this. This is what I found to do. Then with time, you find that which you enjoy to do. We're going to get into that. But here's the point I'm trying to make. God's word requires you or states you that there's nothing better than a man should rejoice in his work. Number two. Notice what it says. Wherefore, I perceive that there's nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own work. Now, look, let's look at the big part. It says, for that is his portion. Does anybody have another translation of the scriptures? That is his lot. That is his lot. Who, 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 does anybody have another translation? That is his heritage. That is his heritage. Is there another translation? That is his share. That is his share. Praise the Lord. I think that will suffice for now. So we we'll see from the text that number one, nothing is better than that a man should rejoice in his work. And number two, we see it says, for that is his portion. Number two, it states so that work is our provision portion from God. Your work is your provision portion from God. Your work is your provision portion from God. Work is your provision portion. Okay, so let me explain this and we'll go to another scripture. So two things are key here in this text. We see that it's important that you recognize that one, you should be happy with what you do. That's one. You should be happy with what you do. And then two, what you do is the portion by which God has made that you enjoy provision. The portion. The portion you have. That's what you have to build upon. That's what you have for God to funnel resources to you. That's what you have. Not an uncle, not a cousin, not a relation. I'll give you, I'll tell you a story. So when I got into the city of Lagos, I had someone I was acquainted with. He had graduated from the university, he wanted to study, study wanted to travel, to so do a master's abroad. But when I came in contact with him, I observed that he was not fully engaged with what he was doing. He had an elder brother who was helping him out, who was living with his elder brother, and the elder brother was feeding him, funding him, everything he required to get from his elder brother. And he had a certain practice. He, was, he, had, a certain, he had graduated from school and was able to practice his profession. But then I'll observe, he'd wake up, we'd go about things we're doing. I was involved in ministry, so I was running around, running around studying and trying to make contact and trying to do things that further the ministry. Get to places, a place to study and so on and so forth. But I observed he wasn't pushing in the direction of what he studied or what he was willing to do. So, so I asked him, I said, what are you waiting for? It was a difficult thing to ask him because he was my friend. 
and um, I didn't want to sound, I didn't want to be offensive, I didn't want to sound cocky or intrusive, but I just had to tell him, I said, so I said to him, I said, between two of us, there's not really much you're doing. I said, so I said, why don't you decide what you want to do? He said, he said, hey, don't worry, I, I, my brother is going to, my brother is going to fund me and I'll go abroad. I said, hey, but the money is not yet available. You have a degree, why don't you? He said, no, 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 in my place, that's how you put it, in my place, ah, the other day, the, 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 the brother takes care of everybody. I said, how? He said, no, that's what happens in my place, in my place, you know, in some cultures in Nigeria. Egbon, are you with me? He takes care of everybody. I said, so I said to him, I said to him, I said, but I know you have a degree. Your father didn't debate a company to your elder brother. It's the same degree that he had. Why wouldn't you do so? Why wouldn't you practice your work? He said, no, 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 it's too demanding. It's too demanding. My vocation is too demanding. I said, why don't you seek employment? Ah, and I'm glad we take my time. <laughs> then how are you going to get money? How are you going to get money? And let, let me add also, that he was vast in the scriptures. He was the kind of person that could teach you the scriptures and explain to you how faith works and what faith is all about. But he couldn't see that you, ex you exact faith in God for provision through the work of your hands. So if you, if you, if you take Philippians 4.19, for example, all my needs are men according to Jesus. I declare that all my needs are men according to Jesus. I declare that all my needs are according to men according to Jesus. You are right. God has the promise that all my needs are men according to his riches in glory. All my needs are men according to his riches in glory. All my needs are born in this. What's the commensurate action for that? The commensurate action is to do what? Walk. So James writes to the church. James writes and is explaining about faith. And he didn't start today. He said, you talk about faith, you talk about words and high polluting words, you talk about it. He said, that's not how faith works. So faith, James is explaining, says, explain, said, show me your faith and I'll show you my works. Then he illustrates, he says, um, as a man is dead without his spirit, so is faith without what? Works. Now, works, I don't speak about work, but works, action. Actions have to be com commensurate or consistent with works, then results are handed. <laughs> That's all that I So, someone is feeling sick in the body. So, many years ago, I was sitting for long hours, maybe 10, 12 hours at the straight time. I started to have a back pain. <laughs> Instead, I took my permittees and all my business. I was lying down in bed. I'll get up. So he said, took my permittees and all my business. My stripes, my stripes. I mean, my stripes, my stripes. I mean, my stripes, my stripes. My stripes, he took my permittees and all my business. Now then, the church was so small. When there was a program, I would, I would make, I would get the cards made, I would hand it, I would go and invite people with the cards, tell them about the days, and then I come back. Instead, took my favorite and go and say, "Oh, that was the fine." Instead, took my and go and say, "So what is that? We're having a program. I so so time and day. How are you feeling?" I said, I'm telling them, but I, I believe I received my healing in the name of the Lord. He said, yeah, thank, thank you, God is going to strengthen me. I, I hope I'll see you. Yes, yes, you'll see me, you'll see me, you'll see me. That was putting action to my words. I didn't say that. Now, I don't say it figuratively. There were days when I had that pain, I cried, literally cried. I'm not saying that I cried. What is this? I cried. But after crying, I wiped my tears. I'm said to my family, I'm going my disease, I'm by his stripes, I'm healed. 
my child. I mean, the stripes, this, the stripes of my family, this pain, you're on the back, you're on the cross with Jesus. Jesus led it to the cross, and in my mind's eye, I'll see myself jogging. But at the point, I couldn't jog. What I could do was take small steps himself. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, he took my family, in the name of Jesus. After some months, I received my healing completely, and I went out and started jogging. I've jogged almost 20 years. But here's the point. I didn't sit back confessing scriptures. I'm just going to take my pen and go my ears. Won't you go to work? Can't you see that I'm sick? My back is failing me. Don't you have any compassion? <laughs> <laughs> So here's what I tell people. When you are sick or challenged on the job, try to get to the office. Let the man on your boss see you were sick. And he sees the commitment. Oh. And there's a place I have to go there. Would they let you go? They will. If you don't come the next day, would they, make, would they give you a query? That is action. You're matching your action. But if you stay at home and you don't call, then they call you and say, I'm sick. What does it sound like? It sounds like an excuse. But here's the point I'm trying to make. You must learn to match actions with words that are spoken. Match action with words that are spoken. That's where the church misses it, particularly ministries and groups and congregations that emphasize on saying the word of God, which you should. Where is the word action? No one in the scripture tells us whatsoever your hands find to do. So when people come and say, there's no job, where did I get a job at this? I say, it's not true. When people say there's no job, what they mean to say is that the kind of job they want, they haven't what found. I can send you to places, I can send you to a location right now. You will go there tomorrow and if you are willing to do what they tell you to do, you will get money for that day. So there are jobs. What did I say? There are jobs. There are construction sites that need people to, to carry blocks, bricks, and seen it. Go there. They have people in short supply. Go there. You have something for that day. But here's the point I'm trying to make. My friend couldn't see the correlation between work and provision. He couldn't. He couldn't. As long as he stayed that way, he was embarrassed. He was embarrassed, as long as one embarrassing situation to another, until eventually he left the city of Lagos. So let me say this again. From Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 22, we see that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his work. That's what we see. And that two, work is a provision portion from God. So if you're going to enjoy provision, God you ought to aim and strive after understanding and applying these two things we talked about. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'll show you something else about work. I tell you guys, I tell you, I tell you guys, I said to you, I said, if, if I find out that ministry is not working, it's not paying my bills and the other things, I'll, I'll quit. I'll quit. I'll quit. I'll quit. <laughs> I'll quit. So I say this humorously. I'll sell the ACs, I'll sell it and open a vet clinic. I'm a vet doctor. I'll sell it, open up a vet clinic. And know when I say that some of you can get and die, why should you sell it? Well, then the question is, so do you want me to fail? Amen. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Now if I open the vet clinic and the vet clinic fails, I will get up um, keke and start riding. I will tell, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. If keke doesn't work, I get Okada. 
have a wife and children. It's better for me, I'm riding on Kada. I hit another Kada. Why do I have to provide for my family? They send me to a booby and my leg is broken and there. And then when my wife comes, oh, sorry, sorry. I tell her, I was trying to provide. <laughs> That's better for me as a man. Don't laugh. That's better for me as a man. As far as I'm concerned, there's no demonstration of love greater than that. I saw a woman driving Keke some time ago. Up until that time, I'd seen maybe one other person. I was so impressed with the lady. I said, I said, how are you? Well? And she was well, well groomed. Well groomed. I said, why are you driving I have children. I have four children. There was nothing. Said, my husband bought this, this um, Keke. Said, my husband bought the Keke. We gave it to somebody. To, the person was not returning money. It was there in the house. I took it out one day and. My husband said no, she called my people to say that I'm, she will divorce me or that she didn't buy the game for his wife. I said, then she said to me, but I'm doing nothing. We need money. I was in prayer. She said, oh God, <laughs> if I tell you how much this girl is, you say, as I speak to you, my husband too is dragging it. <laughs> you see that? When she dropped me, I put in money, I had a thousand naira. It was a 50 naira trip. I said, take, God bless you. And I said, ah, I will tell this lady one day, I will get her to the church to speak. And my question is to you, if you found yourself in a difficult place, would you have the courage to do what she was doing? Or would you be bothered about what your friends and neighbors and colleagues would think disregarding the income that will come from it. Praise the Lord. First of all, I'll show you something. Chapter 4. Quickly, quickly. Are you there? Yes, sir. First of all, chapter 4, I read from verse. It says, And that you study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, that ye may have lack of nothing. The Amplified reads, does anybody have the Amplified? Read verse 11 and 12. Read it and I echo it so they hear. To make it your ambition. To make it your ambition. And definitely endeavor. And definitely endeavor. To live quietly. To live quietly and, peace, and peacefully, and peacefully to, mind your own affairs, to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands and to work with your hands as we charge you. As we charge you. What's, the, what's the, 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 the other one? So that you may bear yourselves. So that you may bear yourselves becomingly, becomingly and be correct. And be correct. And honorable. And honorable. And command the respect of outside world. And command the respect of the outside world. Being dependent world. on nobody. Being dependent on nobody. Self-supporting. Self-supporting. And having need of nothing. And having need of nothing. Do you know why people insult you? <laughs> it's because you don't have respect for yourself. You beg for you beg for cream. You beg for soap. You beg for toothpaste. How can they respect you? <laughs> How can they respect you? If scripture comes to mind, said there was a poor man. So by his wisdom, the city was was saved. But because he was poor, nobody did not recognize him. How can they respect you? How? They can't respect you. I was somewhere, and then the person's neighbor came. Ah, this is the young Pepe. I said, is this madness? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think you are? Now just like I didn't need curry. Ah, ah. This is a joke. If you're 
Africa is exhausted. Must your neighbor know? Come the soup without pepper. Or halt it and go and get what? Pepper. Some things made for insult. So I heard another one. A man in his house, the neighbor called him, oh, this guy give me your second generator. <laughs> So two things we see in this portion. That one, you make it an ambition. Two, God work is God's way of ensuring that your needs are what? Are met. So, work is God's way of ensuring. Now he says to make it your ambition. So you know what ambition is? Ambition is what you want to do or to become. Something you desire to become. Do you understand what I'm saying? So work is something you desire to become or to have. Now if it's something you desire, how is it possible that if over a, a flimsy reason, you drop it? It's your ambition. It is your ambition. Okay, let's take ambition. You want to be a doctor. You want to be a lawyer. You want to be an engineer, a marketer. Everything you do is geared towards fulfilling it. Is that not it? Yeah. So if work should be your ambition, my question then was, are the choices, decisions, and steps you are taking consistent with it? If it is, then just like that, you, you can't just throw in the towel over every 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 slightest discomfort. I'll turn it up. I'll turn it up. You see someone who wants to be a lawyer, you face the exam the first week or the first year, and ah, uh, I feel it, I feel it, I'm not going to be a lawyer. Is that how ambition works? No. Is that how ambition works? No. That's not how ambition works. You try again. You try again. Now, I use this to illustrate. These are real ambitions. They are real ambitions. So it says that you make work your ambition. And then it says something about it being a tradition. It says that you may walk honestly toward them that are without, that you may have lack of nothing. So we see number two that work has a way, but it's God's way of ensuring that your needs are met. Because it says that you may have lack of what? Of nothing. What's it speaking about? Work. So here are the things that we see from these two 
to two points or two things that it's interesting how work regulates your desires and your wants. From these two things, work is your portion, or rather work should be your ambition, and that work is God's way of meeting your needs, ensuring that your needs are met. We see that from these two statements, we said, it's interesting how work regulates your desires and your wants. Have you seen students on campus? Uncle or daddy, buy me this phone. What kind of phone do you want? I want this. I want that. I want that one. They want this one. I want that jeans and I want that shirt. Then they graduate from the university. They start earning money. What do you observe? Those things do, do what? They stop. Their needs or their desires become what? Adjusted. It becomes adjusted immediately. Why? There's something about working and income that comes based on the work that automatically regulates your desires. Do you know the ladies who give money who do not appreciate it? They are not working. The students. The ladies who give money. Ah, is it, is it, is it, is it, uh, is it 50,000? Uh, do you know what would I mean, actually? That lady is not what? Are you afraid, man? That lady is not what? It's not what? If you are working, you go out Monday to Friday, you stay 9 to 5, and you earn a salary, and a, a maid, Gives you money. What will you say? Thank you. You will appreciate it because you did nothing. You know how much the one you earn gets you. How can you how can you be embarrassed about your gift? Then when the person believes you, you say, sorry, I'm very sorry. Don't worry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just I'm believing God I can give you more. If you meet anybody who has earned their pay and has truly earned it, it regulates their need so much so it establishes in them a heart of gratitude when extra that has been unearned is what is given. After Sunday, so nice people give that and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. After just to that, don't worry. It's interesting how work regulates your desires and your wants. Number two, work has a way also of increasing your resource base. That's why Timothy told them, um, Paul told the church at Thessalonica to work. It has a way of increasing your, your resource base. Because in Thessalonica, there were many like this. They won't work. They said, Jesus Christ is coming. Don't bother walking. Don't worry, Jesus Christ will soon come, he will soon come. There's no need to do anything, just be lazy around. Who said, no, 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 when we came to you, we worked. We showed you the example that if you don't work, you don't deserve to eat. That's the tradition we want you to set. So with these truths in my heart, we started the ministry and we started working. And I told people, go, go and do something. Go and engage yourself. So once, somebody there to me came to the church. We were very few then. Much few, maybe not up to 10 or 15. Very few anyway. I don't remember the exact number, but we're few. Now he, he engaged with the members without my knowing. So how are you doing now? So I thought he said, he said, call me. He, he said, Pastor Chidi, I said, he said, what do you teach your church? I said, I didn't know what he was doing. So like he said to me, everybody I greeted, Introducing themselves and myself, they asked me, What are you 
do. He said, all of them without exception. What are you doing? Then I laughed. <laughs> I said, because I'm making clear to them you must be doing something. You can't come to a church to lie on the altar. Is that where money comes from? So I'm going to say, you know, my girl, you know, listen, Pastor, can I just come? I just want to pray, lie down the altar and be seeking God. I said, no, 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 no. I said, no, no. I said, no, no. I said, no, I want to pray. I said, no, no. Where you are, your home, you just say, God lives in you. It's an altar. I said, come here in the evening after you have worked. Come and pray and go. But I can't accept that you come here. Don't you? I'm, I'm just praying to see the face of God. Yes. 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 Look up. You become a nuisance. No, no. Work has a work, knowing your resources. That's what I'm saying, right? Yes. Let me explain that to you. You earn 40,000 naira a month from your work. 40,000, this will come to you. You have enough sense to know I shouldn't exhaust the 40,000 I should do what? Keep a portion. You keep a portion, the first one, the second one, the third one. What's happening to your resources? It's one. That's one way. Two, the way work grows your resources. You're doing a job, you're in a specific place. You're doing a job, people know you for it, or some people know you for it. As you keep doing it, what part gets around? This person can do this, this person can do this, this person can do that. What happens as what goes on? What happens? More people start doing what? Start coming. So here's what I tell people if you work for an individual. If your customer comes, the customer of your boss comes, deal with them. Don't make overtures for them to undercut your boss. Don't do that in principle. Don't do that. However, if they come to you, Excuse me. And say, we know you work here. We can't afford this rate. Would you do it for us privately? You did not solicit for it. I say, take it. Are you with me? Yes, Are you with me? Yes, what's, what's your work doing? It's increasing your what? Your resources. It's increasing your resources. Because more and more people now know you can do it. And more and more and so on. And it's going, it's going, it's going. As you know, you were selling one suit. Somebody wears it, it looks nice. Who bought it? Who sold it to you? It's that person. They come to you, you got two. Another person. What's going on? What's happening to your resources that one people come? Resources is what? It's growing. If you are doing nothing, how can your resources?
clear the place of sin. And the people say, Pastor, Pastor, leave me now. He's my friend. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. He's my friend. If I can't show my hands from cleaning it and the face of it, then I don't qualify to make the money that comes from it. Two, if you see me as a staff, you see me, I'm cleaning it, I'm cleaning the sheet, I'm making sure everything is well done. Will you run away from the faces when you are walking? No. You won't. What's that? So someone tells if somebody else. I that you will do this guy who carries sand. The guy allowed that I carry sand does not mean they pay me back with sand. I said that's true. You can be carrying you with sand, but when they exchange, what is the meaning of exchange? If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'd like to pray with you. Very quickly. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Raise your hand pray for those who are watching by television or those who are live streaming. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for as many as want to receive you as Lord and Savior, that the hold of Satan is broken and that Jesus Christ is revealed to them in a new and living world. Thank you for all the needs that may be represented. Need for peace, need for direction, need for, for order, whatever the need may be. I declare this is as meant in Jesus' name we pray. And hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Chidi. Thank you. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Offering time. Investment time. Investment time. Because indeed you are investing. You might not understand it. But I'm sure if you sit down here with us for the next one month, you will understand why we say invest at my time. If you're watching us live stream, you'll see our details. Just um, take notes of it and then do the needful. Thank you for being a blessing. That's if you want to be a part of this, okay? Thank you for being a blessing. For your offering. We keep saying thank you to our parents for making, it, for making our children be a part of this. Um, you start to train them in the way of the Lord, in the way that they should go, and it starts from now, all right? So let's turn to our feet quietly. Have at the back of our minds. We're about our spiritual acts and not about a casual matter. It's not the time to love Jesus or play or, you know, we're about a spiritual act. I read from the book of Second Timothy, chapter 4, from verse 3. It says, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching, just like you have heard today. Not everybody wants to hear this kind of message, okay? They will follow their own desires. They will do what they want to do, you know, say what they want to say, act how they want to act. And we'll look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. So they will go to the place that, you know, they feel, all right, this, this, is, this is where it suits me. Lahasu sushi karabake, lahabu talabashi tarahake, lahaseseke. Thank you, Father.